Hi, my name is Dr. Jordan Carcavel, and I'm a cosmetic dermatologist and Mohs surgeon. Today, we're going to discuss a case study before and after treatment of scars that occurred after a boating accident. The patient developed keloids, hypertrophic scars, and hyperpigmented scars. And I'll walk you through how we approached it and what we did for treatment. Let's get into it. So the scar that we're looking at here is on the patient's medial thigh, which means inner thigh. On the day of her injury, she was rushed to the hospital. She was taken to the ER where they cleansed the wound and stitched her up really quickly. People heal differently in different locations. So unfortunately, the way this scar healed was less than ideal. She healed with keloids and hypertrophic scars and pigment. So a keloid or a hypertrophic scar is when a scar grows beyond its boundaries or its limits. So you can see in the photo, I described the scar almost like looking like an earthworm. So it's elevated, almost sitting on the skin. So a keloid is caused by signals of the body that continue to create collagen. So the fibroblast and the collagen keeps getting made and there's no signals to stop. And then there was also significant hyperpigmentation. So this is that brown discoloration that you see in the photo. This is typically caused by production of melanin in the skin, so pigment that can occur after an injury. After assessing the skin, we decided that there were several treatments of action that we could take. And I decided to proceed with intralesional, so injecting into the lesion, into the scar, some steroid. And I combined this with vascular lasers, as well as resurfacing lasers, specifically the ablative fractionated CO2 resurfacing laser. And then after I did a series of those treatments, then we proceeded with deep microneedling using uh, PRP as well. So let's dive a little deeper into what each of these treatments are. So first of all, intralesional steroid, we call it intralesional catalog or triamcinolone. That's when we put a, a, an injection, a needle into the scar, into that keloid and inject steroid. And the steroid causes thinning of the scar. It, it softens, it makes it atrophic, it softens it. It also tells the body a signal to stop producing more scar. Then there's the vascular laser. So I use this laser to reduce the blood vessels and the redness that's part of that healing skin. So scars inherently have some vascularity to them as they're healing. And so it helps shut it down a little bit as well if you remove some of the blood supply there. It also visibly looks a little less pronounced when you remove that red hue. And then the last of this series of treatments is the fractionated CO2 resurfacing laser. And I use this to break up some of that scar tissue and homogenize the collagen. At the time of the CO2 resurfacing, I also use that opportunity to put more steroid on top of the wound, and that's called laser-assisted drug delivery. So I'm using the opening columns that were created from the laser to put steroid on that top layer of skin where it can get absorbed. And that, again, the steroid will decrease the signal to scar. It will also help to thin that scar out. So I did a series of those three treatments. So the intralesional steroid combined with the vascular laser combined with the fractionated resurfacing laser. After we completed a series of three, about six weeks apart, I moved into microneedling. So using a microneedling pen with platelet-rich plasma. And I chose this because this would help with some of the pigmentation at a more superficial level. The recovery from the first portion of the treatment, the lasers with the steroid, it takes about five to seven days to heal from each of those sessions. The microneedling sessions are a little bit quicker, probably three to four days. I did these procedures in intervals between six to eight weeks. So I saw this patient very regularly through a period of time. And so the before and after here are probably six months apart. One important thing is to make sure that in that hearing period that you're not getting any sun on the wound because that's going to contribute to more pigmentation and also to keep the wound hydrated using Vaseline and, and protected and try not to pick. From the pictures here, the before and afters, you can see she did really, really well. I don't have a magic wand to completely erase scars, but we can really optimize them, especially following those guidelines. So if you found this video helpful and want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe, like, and throw any comments or questions down below. Thank you.